Native American culture is often viewed through the lens of mysticism and awe. Unfortunately, much of their history has been brutally buried, lost or ignored due to manifest destiny. Grand civilizations, their ways of life, languages and religion have all but fallen into myth and the fascination of others while their descendants struggle. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three Native American prophecies and occurrences. The Seventh Generation Prophecy of Crazy Horse In 1840, Toshunk Vitko was born to a Minakonju mother and an Onglala father, two branches of the Lakota division of the Sioux. Toshunk Vitko, meaning Crazy Horse, had become the leader of the Oglala warband which fought against the US government and their destruction of Lakota land and civilization. At birth, Vitko was named Shan Uen, meaning among the trees. At the age of 14, Vitko was said to have had his first vision, induced with the help of his father. Black Elk, Vitko's cousin, revealed that first vision's contents. When I was a man, my father told me something about that vision. Of course, he did not know all of it, but he said that Crazy Horse dreamed and went into the world where there is nothing but the spirits of all things. That the real world is behind this one, and everything we see here is something like a shadow from that world. He was on his horse in that world, and the horse and himself on it, and the trees and the grass and the stones and everything were made of spirit, and nothing was hard, and everything seemed to float. His horse was standing still there, and yet it danced around like a horse made only of shadow, and that is how he got his name, which does not mean that his horse was crazy or wild, but that in his vision it danced around in that queer way. Vitko had an array of visions and supposed prophecies throughout his life, including the seven-generation prophecy, which goes as follows. I see a time of seven generations when all the colors of mankind will gather under the sacred tree of life and the whole earth will become one circle again. On that day, there will be those among the Lakota who will carry knowledge and understanding of unity among all living things, and the young white ones will come to those of my people and ask for this wisdom. I salute the light within your eyes where the whole universe dwells, for when you are that center within and I am that place within me, we shall be as one. This prophecy then dictates the possibility of an era where the races of the world, or at least the Native Americans and European originating white Americans, mend the wounds of the past and start a new era full of understanding of unity. Where the Native American populations might recover from centuries worth of tragedy and abuse. Unfortunately, seven generations have come and gone since Vitko's hopeful prophecy. More than 150 years have passed and approximately 10 generations have followed with no sign of this new era of healing for the native people. The Hopi Prophecy Thomas Banyakia, who was an elder of the Hopi people, made an elusive, frightening and famous prophecy in 1995. In life, Thomas Banyakia was regarded as a generous and caring man, but known for his dire warnings of the future. Not long after his prophecy in 1999, he passed from this earth into whatever world lies ahead. In 1979, Thomas Banyakia adamantly stood against the strip mining of the Black Mesa by the Peabody Coal Company and took activist action throughout his entire life against things that could destroy the earth, while asserting that the earth itself, our mother, will not hesitate to humble us all as her foolish and harmful offspring. After all, even if humanity meets its doom, the planet will still be there and it will recover into something glorious once gone. Humans will not. Banyakya frequently spoke of the threat of floods, hurricanes, storms and earthquakes, and of all aspects of nature's wrath which he believed humanity was instilling in the spirit of the earth. The increasing number of natural disasters made Banyakya believe that the planet was responding to our cruelty by matching it with her own. Within the prophecy tapes, the Hoppy Elder ominously spoke of more sickness that can't be cured for a long time, and that the seasons are going to change. Of course, we can already see that very thing happening. Likewise, we observe the beginnings of an era where flora and fauna alike struggle to differentiate between seasons and when they should sprout or blossom. 
hibernate or hunt. Native American tribes, compared to other communities, do hold nature in a far higher regard than most other populations. For centuries, the tribes lived as part of nature, one with the world until their lands were stolen from them and their numbers dwindled due to the horrors of colonization. Even now, America's indigenous tribes try to continue their connection with the Earth. The prophecy claims that this story of humans harming the Earth and the Earth fighting back has been an endless cycle. But if we do not reverse the direction in which we are headed, we will only meet the horrific consequences of our own actions. According to Thomas Banyakya, three previous human worlds were destroyed when people became greedy, worshipped technology as a god, fought and hurt each other, and repeatedly forgot the ethical teachings they'd been given to honor the earth as the source of life and sustenance. Three apocalypses inevitably ensued, first by fire, then by ice, then a flood. Noah's Ark floated through one book's collective memory to escape a similar greed-ending catastrophe. The future is visible in the now. Comet Airburst had devastating effects on Native American culture. 1,500 years ago, the Earth suffered a catastrophic blow by a raging comet. North America suffered the aftermath, and it is believed that the comet's fall resulted in the Native American population of Hopewell, its culture and civilization, being wiped out at an increased rate. The University of Cincinnati and its researchers have especially become fascinated with the findings. During their study of the event, they uncovered 11 sites which could be excavated to reveal further intel about the comet and its consequences on the planet. These archaeological sites spread from the River Valley to Hopewell, Ohio. Notably, the comet itself, at its full size, did not fall onto Earth. The results of that could have been an extinction event. Instead, the comet flew over our planet, but in its tracks a myriad of particles from it fell onto the planet's surface. This fatal debris flew onto the ground, flaming and explosive due to the long atmospheric fall, hitting North America's landscape like a thousand fiery missiles from space. The area of devastation was believed to have been 9,200 square miles. That is larger than the US states of Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Delaware combined. The exact date of this occurrence is still debated, but it's believed to have been somewhere between 252 CE and 383 CE. The flaming comet particles would have slammed into villages, harmed natural plains, forests, and even mountains, as well as surrounding settlements. In their study, the researchers wrote, while Hopewell people survived the catastrophic event, it likely contributed to their cultural decline. There is no way of adequately knowing how many casualties were a result of the meteorites. According to the University of Cincinnati's professor of anthropology, Kenneth Tankersley, what's fascinating is that many different tribes have similar stories of the event. The Miami Native American nation tell of a horned serpent that flew across the sky and dropped rocks onto the land before plummeting into the river. When you see a comet going through the air, it would look like a large snake. The Shawnee referred to a sky panther that had the power to tear down forests. The Ottawa talk of a day when the sun fell from the sky, and when a comet hits the thermosphere, it would have exploded like a nuclear bomb. But what are your thoughts on these prophecies and occurrences? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.